Hello. Hey, Matt. Hey, how are you? Good. Good to see you again. How are things? Things are going well. Uh, joining for the first time yeah. in this group, so. Awesome. Hi, Richie. Uh, yeah, uh, where are you from? Uh, I, what company? I mean, what, what are you working on? I'm uh, a pixie. Hmm. We, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Of course. Yes. 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 We yes. met at the uh, at the top of the at the picture party. Yeah, we had a we had a not so know, it's a lot of people there. So you have to you have to you have to pardon the brain part. Uh, it's funny going back to a Zoom, you know, versus being in person. It's a you different know. yeah. It's a different environment. Uh, Richie, did you hear back from Alalita? Was she coming? Um, she said she is available for half an hour, but else blocked. She can join from now until in 30 minutes, uh, but she's not here. Bartik sure. couldn't make it because he needs to finish something for Prometheus. And that needs to go, oh, well, needs, but should go out tomorrow. Um, yeah, to be honest, I feel like, um, I think a lot of people, if I'm probably projecting here, but just recovering from, from KubeCon and catching back up with all the things uh, is almost a full-time job by itself. Um, so I would expect today is pretty quiet. I have some administrivia and a couple updates uh, if we get quorum here. Um, I was on the TOC call uh, just a half an hour ago. Uh, that also was an extremely, uh, an, an extremely short, uh, extremely uh, quiet meeting uh, for the TOC as well, but I give a brief update. Um, I mean, we, we already had one call after, um, and that actually had a ton of new users, so I'm kind of surprised we are literally four people here. Yeah. On the other hand, we have, we have, hey, Alolita. Hi, Richard. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Yeah, we, I don't know, we, maybe it's the summer winter time change uh, and people getting conf confused about well, when. Today uh, in many countries is a holiday for some folks. And, you know, today our kids are all home from school for a teacher planning day. So I know at least in the States, many people have kids at home today that are normally at school. So that, so, uh, you know, I'm not actually. Wait, it could also be post cube gone, which is, I think you know, something. Too, that there's a little bit yeah. of uh, saturation. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I have a couple things I could talk about, but I so, uh, but but I think first, uh, <laughs> why don't we start anyway? Uh, because we're you know four minutes in. Uh, this is a CNCF uh, meeting. Uh, the code of conduct applies. Um, please don't do or say anything that is a violation of that code of conduct. Um, uh, maybe we could do intros, which might be really short here. Uh, but uh, you know we we we've spent a whole bunch of time, but I'm not sure that you've met Rich here, Alo Alita. Uh, do you wanna? Say hi. Yeah, definitely. Uh, hi, Umid. Um, I'm Alolita Sharma, and I actually have just joined the uh, CNCF uh, Tag Observability Group as a co-chair. Uh, again, super happy to be working with um, Richard and Matt uh, together. And you know, all of us m have been kind of working in observability for a while, so. It's really nice to have these discussions where you know we are working with end users and with the larger developer community to um, build out um, you know op observability open source uh, solutions. And uh, again, look forward to you know any any items that you have that you would awesome. like to discuss. Great, awesome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Usually, there's more discussion. To be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, this is a super quick thing. Um, yeah. Hi, Richard. Uh, Prometheus, open metrics, open telemetry, and take observability and Grafana and stuff. Cool. And let me introduce myself as well. Uh, so I'm Omid, part of the uh, work on Pixie at New Relic. Um, 
the reason I kind of got interested in this and looped in here was uh, I noticed the white paper. Um, I noticed there was a section on uh, eBPF uh, and observability, and there was some interest in that. And so I lead the eBPF uh, stuff at Pixie. And so um, just looking to see if there's any way I can help out and, and participate. Oh, yeah. wonderful, wonderful. Because I think, uh, Omid, we might have even chatted earlier on some of the eBPF calls, but uh, again, really excited about the Pixie work that's ongoing. And, um, you know, we are, I work actively, very actively on open telemetry, as you know, so definitely, you know, looking forward to having some of your time, maybe even on the EBPF work group. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I'm already very active with the open telemetry EBPF group. Uh, yeah. So cool, uh, cool. Omid is um, uh, underselling a little bit. Uh, he, he basically is heading up uh, EBPF for Pixie. Yes, uh, I know. <laughs> much of that. We, 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 yep. So, um, yeah. Cool. Anyways, really happy to be here and just, uh, you know, um, here to help. If there's any way I can contribute, um, um, be happy to do so. Cool. Um, Alalita or Richie, is there anything that you want to put on the agenda? I have some stuff I can put on if it's just a, a small I, I honestly think that not a lot of people read the, um, read the meeting notes and such. So I, I wouldn't like, don't spend your powder on something when we only have, well, only, but still we have basically have four people in this call. Uh, I mean, last I call could we talk had. to it for a few minutes. Not, not I could write a bunch of stuff in the doc. Um, also I'm, totally fine. I'm I'm just saying, I, before, before that, was there anything that you, you, you either of you wanted to do? White paper is a non-update because I was sick for quite a bit of uh, of the time. Um, and call for new work streams, but yeah, not a lot of people in this call. Um, so where are we with the logo? Do we actually, I think we, we, we saw, we, we closed down on one, right? Is there a follow-up that I or no, one we, of us should do with the uh, CNCF folks to get our community space and our stickers and... Art. We gave the update to um, Alalita, uh, sorry, not to Alalita, to Amy. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know, I'm super bad with names and I confuse names all the time, uh, in particular if they're in similar regions, like CNCF region. Um, I, yeah, Amy didn't get back, um, but it was also KubeCon and such, so um, I can I can try and poke again. Uh, she no, I can do that. I've got I've got a little more time than I've had in weeks past. Like my next few weeks, I've got lots of, of time to do some contribution stuff, and I can cover kind of what I'm planning uh, when we get to to, to the end or to me. So Richard, I can actually follow up on that with Amy. The uh, did you just ping Amy on Slack, or is there a email thread that we usually? No, 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 I, I, uh, I misspoke. It was Amy who didn't get back to me, not you. I, uh, okay, I'm okay. just really, really bad with names. No, no, no. Um, it's this issue. Um, yeah, that gives us, for what it's worth, the you know the community space uh, for us, uh, a logo, I believe, with the community space, and then our YouTube channel gets a logo and a little bit more jazz stuff with some, some with like, I think the new, I forget what it's called, the new conferencing video stuff. So we don't have to upload videos anymore and edit them and all that. Um, okay. oh, I mean, is there anything, um, in particular, like if you think moonshot type stuff, you know, you know, you've been working down in the bits, literally <laughs> down in the bits of, of, of collecting telemetry and signals for, you know, <laughs> uh, what a decade or more now. Uh, so, you know, if, if uh, I like to ask the question sometimes with folks that have been, you know, implementing this stuff for a long time or have, a, have otherwise been involved. You know, shake a stick or wave a magic wand. You know, what's possible now? What can we put together that we couldn't before? Uh, I'll talk to an idea I've got coming out of KubeCon that I've been incubating for a couple of months now. But um, is there anything that you know you you would love to see, or a collaboration, or 
a coalition type of effort across the, the CNCF ecosystem? <laughs> that, uh, that's, a, that's a big question. Um, in terms of collaborate, I mean, in terms of like cool things coming down the pike, um, I mean, obviously I know more on like what our roadmap for Pixie is. And so some of the cool stuff I think coming down. I mean like zooming out from Pixie. I mean like big picture, like just, in industry. Like I feel like I'm living in the Jetsons all the time and everywhere yeah. I look, there's just like all these things that we could make happen now and will. But is there anything that is particularly like flying car grade, you know, would be so cool? Pretend you're kid again and <laughs> yeah i mean the whole like i mean obviously with the push with ebpf and like just just zero instrumentation or auto telemetry i think is obviously big obviously pixie's put a big bet behind that but i think we're just scratching the surface there in terms of observability um you know there's a lot more we can do with uh, as ebpf gets kind of more and more kind of rich i think there's a lot of uh Cool things we can do it do with it for observability. I think um, kind of helping developers in terms of logging um, stuff that's happening with their application or making eBPF more pervasive and letting without really having to understand eBPF, but getting application developers to use the power of eBPF. So there's obviously with eBPF trace and stuff, there's a lot of cool observability stuff happening there. Um, but kind of taking that to the next level. So that people don't even know that they're dealing with BPF, but mm -hmm. but they're getting the benefits of observability um, and interacting with higher level kind of languages and models and stuff to to get that stuff. I think that would be um, kind of I think that's a pretty cool direction to go with in terms of observability. I don't know. Sorry, but I, I don't know if that that kind of is the no no no. I mean, I mean, there, there's just the four of us, right? We've got, yeah. We've got you got three co-chairs of you uh, and we're kind of planning out, you know, we've just, in my mind, and this is what I said last hour at the TOC, the, TOC, the technical oversight committee meeting, you know, the dust for me at least has been settling over the week, the last week or so from KubeCon, yeah. right? You know, I'm still ingesting quite a lot of talks. Um, Alolita, I think you you said you were working on a blog post that kind of summarizes them. Yes, yes. So I, yeah. I saw the list that Michael posted. It, I, I think I have a list from, in our meeting notes from a couple of weeks ago, that's probably double that. So, um, you know, I, I think that's where everyone is, if I'm projecting again. What do you think of the eBPF collector announcement from a few weeks ago from Splunk? And have you looked at it yet? Um, yeah, I was actually, I was part of that working group that uh, kind of was doing the evaluation of that. Um, I think it's great for the community to have, uh, obviously, an eBPF collector. Um, I think we, from a community perspective, and I tried to make this known in the in the, the the working group itself, and tried to kind of get this message out. Is I think we want to be inclusive. Um, eBPF, calling it the eBPF collector, it, like eBPF is just so wide, it yep. doesn't kind of tell you what it does, right? Mm -hmm. eBPF can be used for networking, can be used for security, it can be used for like there's classical BPF, there's doing profiling with it, there's doing tracing with it, there's, mm -hmm. it's a, like, it's a tool. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my feedback was just, you know, we, we really should set a roadmap for open telemetry and how it wants to use eBPF. And maybe we have an open telemetry eBPF umbrella of collectors, but calling, like, we need to be like more precise with, and have a roadmap and think a little bit to the future and have a plan of how we want to kind of push this stuff out because really what was contributed was just the network performance monitoring from Splunk. Right? Right. That's what it does. Yeah, Calling that's it correct. EBPF, yes. right? It's right. not EBPF, you know, in its entirety for sure. It, exactly. It's like it's like you know a small section of what EBPF can do. And so yeah. I think messaging wise and from the CNCF's perspective and Open Telemetry's perspective, I think we want to be kind of kind of realize that and not kind of limit the scope too much. And, I agree. And, yeah, and have a roadmap for like all the cool things that we can do and contribute to the community. Yeah, so, I mean, and then Omid, just to you know, kind of reiterate that um, the discussions in the larger community, even within Open Telemetry, have been to you know be very clear about um, you know what specific scope the current uh, code base handles, and then also make sure that 
um, very much, you know, there is uh, interoperability and in, in integration with Pixie and any other collectors, you know, that actually exist as pipelines, right? So the yeah. idea is not really to just say, okay, whatever you have is what, you know, is the only solution. That's definitely not been the, um, yeah. you know, the project's uh, decision. Correct. So, yeah. And we're working in the work group, like I'm, I'm trying to, you know, also get the work group to kind of do more, look more broadly and look at other stuff too. So we're actually doing a review of Pixie and then I'm trying to pull in other projects as well. So it's not, so we have, you know, Splunk Flash Flow Mill, then there's Pixie, but then there's like Parso just came out with an EBTF based profiler. And then there's, you know, so many different projects yeah. out there that yeah. use EBTF. I believe Stack State is using something, you know, to, to pull some metrics. Yeah. I, I kind of view EBPF kind of kind of like um the only the, the analogy that comes to me is like you know advances in understanding of cellular biology uh, and viral epidemiology and microscopy and all of that right like we have all these new drugs we have all these new cool capabilities we could do we also have like weapons of mass destruction and like things that can wipe out a continent and horrible bugs right so like with EBPF you know there's so much you can do in a read-only mode as we had talked at length about, but if you start considering what you can do, if you get a little bit more oh, yeah. benevolently intrusive, you know, you can start doing, you know, all manner of validation. You can do actual code path analysis, not just blocks and lines and, and code coverage, but code path. You know, you can, you can uh, potentially dramatically reduce the cost of validation in terms of not having to make mocks and stubs and fakes uh, when you can just thump things arbitrarily with a, with a proper framework in place. So, so there's all kinds of things that could be built, but there's also all kinds of, you know, potential, you know, really nasty kind of, oh yeah, you know, <laughs> taking Trojan, Trojan to the next level sort of. Right. Um, with great power and great open, responsibility, open, open, right? Not <laughs> just standards, but open norms or like almost, a, you know, you know, kind of like out of the GitOps working group, they kind of have not quite a manifesto, but they have, these are some guiding principles that we as a community have come together around. And this is our current thinking on, you know, just like we do with, you know, hey, you know, genetics is great, but we're generally not going to clone humans right now. Maybe we'll revisit it in a generation, like, like humanity has decided that, you know, I think we need to do the same thing around this, like, you know, the Heisenberg aspects of things, you know, and, and, and just how do we describe to a consumer or how do we describe to an end user, you know, what does this thing really do? And, and what can you tell your CIO that it won't do, you know, uh, and language for that might be helpful, I think. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, eBPF is kind of at this cusp where people are just figuring out what it does. And yes, it can be super powerful. And I think things are still getting figured out in terms of, of, like the obvious ones are, you know, observability and security, but it's like, I think people are, there's some people who like are rushing to kind of adopt this sort of stuff. And then there's another camp, which is very cautious because of all the implications of, you know, the power that comes with eBPF. So I think we're seeing some of that stuff play out uh, right now. And so it'll be really interesting to see how it, you know, where people end up and how we communicate it and how people become comfortable with it and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think it also has the ability to generate a truckload of data, just, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What is a, a, a magnitude beyond, you know, <laughs> yes, so sure. I think of it as like this awesome new capability where, you know, we can go like my favorite picture in the whole universe for the last couple of weeks has been this one, you know, like we can just yeah. pick where we want to probe. And this isn't even the full picture. That's just some of it, right? Around what are all the probes we can have and what are all the places we can get signals. Yep. Cool. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, the data explosion back when, like in the bro days and BPF days or Berkeley packet filter back then, like we full name, um, that was one of the hurdles uh, we also hit, that there was just so much data that, that back then the systems couldn't really deal with, with everything if you just turned everything to give me everything. Um, we, hit, we hit the same limitations with compilers. That's why, um, yeah. like, there's a lot I mean, of things we could have done 20 years ago with compilers, but we have gigabyte size program databases. I cut you off, though. I'm sorry. 
much of that back then was done in in dedicated uh, cards. Like it, a lot of this is coming from the networking and bro space, and you had hugely expensive cards, and you actually had to write VHDL, and it was horrible. Uh, but the network chair at my university really loved it. So, <laughs> um, for the use cases, I initially I thought this might be something suited for the white paper, but maybe that's actually something which where we can establish an actual work stream uses of eBPF. Of course, everyone is talking about it, but not everyone has actually read up about what you can do with it. Um, so even on a higher level than this is how to do it or, or something, more of an initial high level, this is what you can even consider doing. And then go into all those different aspects of, of what eBPF can do. Because that's like looking at a few of the of of the general content out there and also a little bit of the coupon talks. I, I jumped in between a little bit. Um there was a lot of all this potential, and that's absolutely true. Um, but there was not so much of reduce this huge amount of potential into specific things which you can consider for yourself of as pursuing in the in the short or medium term. Like yep. almost like those user stories, use case books, something like this where you actually say, okay, this is something where I can use it and it's better because this and that. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, so are you suggesting that we have that as a separate kind of something we publish separately? I, I think as it probably makes sense to have an overview in the white paper and then in depth in the other thing, but I'm not certain like this is just okay. my opinion. Yeah. I also think this would mesh super nicely with uh, with open telemetry work because this could then be literally a, these are the use cases and this is how we deduct deduce from this. And so we need to cover X use case um, and coming from from use cases. Yeah. So I, I completely agree. I think for the white paper, we can, I mean, the white paper has kind of got the observability focus. So we can talk about an overview in there. So, I mean, there's only so much we can go in depth there, right? Like you said. So I think we can kind of have an overview there and fill out that section of how EVPF is used for observability and then point to the white paper for more detail. The white paper could even be more broad because than just observability, because once you start talking about EVPF, you're, it's, it's not just observability, it's also security, it's also network management. It's, you know, again, this uh, eBPF it just means so many different things to so many different people. Um, yeah. So like we can kind of broaden that and kind of just give them an overview of what are, what's the lay of the land with eBPF. So as to the white paper, um, we actually did consider if we, if we cut a 101 version, which is super reduced, and then we have literally the same TUC, the, the same everything, sometimes even the same text in a more verbose version, which goes more depth. Um, as to the other aspect with, um, I think it would make sense to just try and establish an, an, a work stream within the tag to, to define eBPF use cases and to define, well, not even use cases, but like you can use it for networking course X and you have you have these and that interfaces. And this makes sense because you can get stuff directly from uh, the kernel and you don't have to go into your into your application and maybe you get delays and maybe you have drop buffers, blah, 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 blah. You get the raw thing from the system. And all those aspects, um, why is it nicer to have tracing coming from the kernel versus uh, versus from, from code which I write versus what are the advantages of, um, of if I actually do sit someone down and they need to instrument the code themselves. Like this kind of thing to explore this, I can easily see this it's, uh, being its own oh, yeah. uh, work stream and, and quite yeah. interesting paper talk webinar coming out. I completely agree. And there is, an, there is a very interesting question between like the eBPF way and the open telemetry way. And I think there's pros and cons to both. And I don't think either one's really gonna go away. Like the manual instrumentation stuff and putting essentially trace points inside your code has a lot of benefit. And it has, there's certain things you just can't do very easily with eBPF that you, you know, it makes a lot more sense to do the kind of the 
the open telemetry way. And so I think in the end, these things are going to end up being complementary, but kind of understanding where one is the right approach to go and the other one's the right approach to go, I think that that can be clarified and would be useful for the community. So is there, um, I know a few folks who are at KubeCon who might be interested in collaborating on, on a doc like this. Is there anyone else that um, I mean, from our end, definitely there are uh, several folks, I mean, both on OTEL as well as AWS, uh, who are, you know, happy to and, and interested in collaborating. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that it's a, it would be actually a really good idea. Does this, I mean, this white paper doesn't necessarily have to be extremely detailed, but on the other hand, you know, just laying out the landscape and actually being able to, um, you know, kind of maybe look at it from a maturity uh, standpoint. That is, what are some of the areas where, you know, some of the foundational work has already been done? And, and you know, like, as you said, Splunk's component really is doing uh, networking, you know, metrics, for example, uh, Pixie's approach is slightly more general, you know? So again, actually having some what of a comparative analysis also might be useful because it really begs the question that, you know, what is, what is the, is there a general collection process there or is it, you know, it doesn't become more specialized for the different types right. of, uh, types of, uh, uh, you know, data and the different layers uh, within this whole, you know, section, right, of profiling and, and, and uh, really, you know, from an, and the reason I say that is because you know, for those of us who are down in the in the details and the you know we understand the distinctions, right? But for a customer who is looking at this and saying, okay, how do we actually take this, and and what tools are best suited, or what libraries exist today? What is the best practice here? And then, uh, you know, how do I take a decision based on what kind of metrics I can consume and what's useful to my stack? Um, is is very useful i think uh, absolutely yeah and and yeah we can kind of yeah i think those are all topics we can kind of hit and, and it would be use, really useful for like most people they're users of ebpf indirectly they're not actually going to be writing ebpf code right yes like, like, like you were saying exactly. the customers and stuff and so like understanding when how just at a high level how it works when it's useful when you actually really need to get into the nitty gritty versus when can you just like use existing stuff. Um, and kind of like I said at the outset, I think I think the direction for BPF eventually will be like, hopefully it becomes easier and easier to use such that it's ab most of it's abstracted away uh, to users and people who are getting data from BPF or networking policies or security from BPF. They're not actually need to know much about BPF, but it would be nice for them to understand how it's kind of doing this stuff under the hood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Agreed. So um, again, I know I know I have to drop off in about a minute, but um, how do we go about the next steps here? Should we just actually discuss this as a framework next time we meet, or should we just do a doc and just like start a Google Doc and just share it, or what makes sense? We can send email to the mailing list um, yeah, to yeah. cover anyone who's not here, so we don't lose those two weeks. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we can start with an empty doc and just start collecting stuff. It's mm -hmm. always a little bit risky to start with a completely empty doc, but on the other hand, it's, um, I think we can suggest can... the framework, uh, Omid, maybe yeah. I know you have a pretty, you know, in-depth idea of the areas that, you know, you, and especially with Pixie, as you guys have built it out and thought about it, I think, you know, that can serve as a baseline and then. Right. So, yeah, I was just going to suggest, I mean, maybe what makes sense is put some of these thoughts into the doc so that at least there's a purpose or problem statement. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, like a mission statement for what the doc is supposed to do, maybe a few, out, like a little bit of a skeleton mm -hmm. of some topics that we can hit and then kind of throw it out uh, to the rest of the team so that, um, you know, it's just to, to seed it, right? Because yeah. if we just throw out an empty doc, like, exactly. it, like people might not know what to do with it. Right, right. Totally. Okay, cool. So um, what's the next step there? So let uh, me put together, I can put together the, uh, like 
just some scattered notes and stuff and a little bit of a doc outline. Um, okay. And then I can send it. Who should I, then should I send it out to this group or? Okay. Um, that's the mailing list. Uh, you can just subscribe to it um, uh, through, through list CNCFIO. Um, just subscribe to it and send emails, say hi and say, hey, last call, we decided to open this. Um, look here for collaboration yeah. and stuff. Okay. Yeah. And Great. and uh, I mean, once you share it, then you know I can also add, um, you know, some of the areas that uh, at least I have, you know, again gotten mm -hmm. feedback on in in terms of uh, customer, you know, requests and um, how that relates to the to our, you know, to the hotel stack that's currently existing. So definitely can add that detail. Perfect. That'd be great. So let me put the skeleton together and then uh, I'll shoot out to the mailing list or, or if I, maybe I'll preview it with uh, some of you first, just to make sure yeah, that it yeah, kind of makes certainly. sense. Right. And then, yeah. uh, then we can throw it out onto the mailing list. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, please uh, feel free to you know, use me and anything I can support you on. Perfect. I'll, tip, I'll very likely take you up on that offer. Okay. Okay. It sounds good. <laughs> All right, thank you. I, I have to drop though, uh, again. Uh, it was a good good chat though today. So thank you again. <laughs> See you later. Thank you. Yep. Bye, bye. bye. Yep. Nice. Nice. Oh, we have another joiner. Hi, Pranav. I hope I pronounced you correctly. If not, uh, please. Has joined, yes. um, yeah, hi. Hello. Hello. Hey there. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about uh, eBPF and, and starting a work, through, a work stream around EP, eBPF and how and when to use it. Um, Omit mm -hmm. uh, will, be, will be creating something. Else, we have a super empty call this time around. <laughs> it's actually only us. No, yeah, yeah. Like a dozen people. I, I think it's a. It's a good time. I can ask some basic question. I'm also joining it for the first time. Like, what is this uh, uh, channel about? Uh, this discussion about? Uh... So, um, are you familiar with CNC and how the tags are structured? Uh, not really. Okay. I just uh, yeah. Okay, uh, totally fine. Um, a great place to start is the talk that um, it's in the meeting notes uh, from today. Um, uh, that that kind of covers some of some of the history, uh, for sure. Um, welcome. Uh, what, what do you work on uh, in your day job? What's uh, what's interesting to you, or what are you working on? I'm sorry. Matt asks what, uh, basically, uh, if you could introduce yourself, just so we normally uh, introduce ourselves and, and tell each other why we care about um, joining here. Um, I mean, in this case, if you're not certain why you're joining and we need to sell to you why you're joining, maybe we need to pitch first, <laughs> uh, which is also fine, but uh, yeah. So my idea was to uh, like explore the uh, like I, I I wanted to improve my tech tech stack the thing that I'm working on I'm primarily work into the event driven architecture and everything so yeah somewhere if anything related or important to that I wanted to explore so that's what I was trying to do. Uh, so uh, this tag observability is a particular uh, uh, you know. Uh, is it is some library uh, that offers some features? No, so um, the super short version is um, uh, you have CNCF TOC, the Technical Oversight Committee. They decide which projects uh, get into CNCF, um, which move up from sandbox uh, incubation uh, to graduated, and and all those kinds of things. And then you have the technical advisory groups for various bits and pieces like networking, security, blah, blah, blah. And one of those technical advisory groups is um, is us, Tech Observability. So yeah. this oh. is um, okay. a group of people who care about observability and, and produce. 
Here, I'll put up a slide really Listen. fast, uh, if you like, and then I can uh, I can cover the stuff that I was going to cover briefly. Um, but just to I just want just to say welcome. We have a, a unusually small uh, uh, set here today, um, so here this might help. Uh, what what we're to is this is the slides from. Um, uh, it's. I'm looking for this slide. So the, the CNCF has a technical oversight committee. Uh, and we used, there used to be called special interest groups. They're now called technical advisory groups. And they exist to inform the technical oversight committee about gaps in the ecosystem, opportunities for collaboration, to assist the technical oversight committee with uh, a number of, um, you know, uh, uh, help with evaluations and guidance and, and things like that. Um, okay. Uh, again, uh, we, we, have a, we have a talk that covers it um, uh, in, in, quite, in quite some detail, but, but in a nutshell, uh, we're a group of vendors, uh, project uh, contributors, and or folks engaged with projects, uh, as well as end users, people using CNCF technologies to solve business challenges uh, out in, in the market. Uh, and so the technical advisory group uh, is, is an organization that has the ability to, to, to help out in all of those kind of contexts. Um, does, that, does that help? Uh, welcome. Uh, so, um, Richie, I wanted to bounce this off you as well, uh, and, and, and whomever. Um, so I put some links, I won't spend a lot of time on it here, uh, but I put some links in the meeting notes to um, a doc I've been, I started a, a couple weeks ago, um, and we'll be having a bunch of updates in the next week, really, as um, I've got a bunch of stuff on, on paper and whiteboards here that, that will move in. Uh, but uh, you know, we've got the domain, it's going to be observe-kh.dev. Um, we have the IO as well, but uh, my thinking is uh, I want to use a dynamic informer. Um, a, 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 it's like a watch, but with, with some additional caching in Kubernetes to watch for state changes, create, update, delete of Kubernetes resources, um, including CRDs. Awesome. A dynamic informer will allow you to do that. So that stream of events really, or from that dynamic informer, I want to update and cre will create and, and populate a Neo4j uh, graph database uh, that uses, um, it's a whole talk by itself, but uses a, a time-based versioning, uh, either by probably with a composite uh, times key space, you know, so it's sortable by time, but um, really by, to, to be able to correlate uh, what's being deployed, you know, in terms of uh, uh, particular versions of things, but also as operators continue to uh, spread their scope, we will have a continued explosion of CRDs, custom resource definitions, uh, with a lot of interesting interactions between them uh, and, and, and the reconciliatory loops and the controllers that, that you know, uh, manage them, uh, manage the instances of objects that they represent. Uh, you know, in a cluster, that is the system. So uh, I want to build a graph database of that um, uh, and then use it in interesting ways <laughs> um, uh, to both, you know, provide some of the visualizations that we would want to show of how graphs and their topology uh, systemically and structurally change over time. Uh, so, you know, I have a design that I'll be putting in there, you know, where we, we leverage some basic time-based versioning. So you, you, you could think of you know, if you have, you separate structure from state and for a particular node in a, in a graph. Graphs have gra relationships and nodes. So by separating the structure from the state, you know, you have copy on write semantics. So, you know, if a CRD is going to be updated, an existing one say, uh, rather than make an update to the node, you, you take the state from the node and that gets sort of snapshotted uh, and, you, uh, and you have the new node that is now, now current. Uh, and there are different approaches based on, you know, whether or not you want like a radial set of snapshots, or if you're going to have a ton of snapshots, as we would have here, uh, you might want to have effectively a linked list or a chain of nodes that are the, all of the previous states ordered by time uh, with links to themselves. So when you find something and you want to replay the history of it, you, you have a very um, inexpensive uh, traversal uh, to do. Uh, in addition, you can leverage a lot of the graph data science library that Neo4j has been working on for the last few years uh, to do centrality analysis, you know, to do 
it's just, I, I won't go through it, but there's, there's five or six different buckets of graph data science algorithms uh, that suddenly we can bring to bear on what is the system Kubernetes and everything running it in it and, and Kubernetes itself doing. Uh, in addition, I posit, uh, I haven't proved it out, but it seems to me that that structure once created and, and maintained, and, and this could be done locally or as a service, you know, there's all, I want to build the capabilities, not, not, not necessarily a product. Um, uh, but, but lastly, uh, I, I will say, um, you know, I think this approach for aggregations and other sorts of things where we have systems that deal with aggregations and roll-ups and downsampling and all manner of things in a sort of a big, heavy, just about the metrics way. But I think by leveraging a graph underlying structure to complement the other systems that we have, I think we can provide more semantic uh, uh, comprehension where I can enable better semantic comprehension for practitioners and users because you know, a picture or augmented reality glasses with a 3D model is worth more than a few words. Uh, so that's the overall concept for the thing. I think what we had talked about in previous weeks or I had just kind of meandered on about a bit is a front door where it would be kind of neat, but you know, you see yourself, your, your yourself, your request and your, your kind of session, if you will, um, uh, visually displayed. And so I think taking, taking the things I mentioned applying some of the stuff from uh, current thinking around streaming systems and unbounded data sets and how to organize them into sessions like we do for click streams and things like that. Um, that, that is also, there's some potential greenfield there or open area to just connect some things that, that I haven't seen connected yet, but could give us some really powerful capabilities to, to leverage these disparate sources of, of, of data and then correlate it back to, again, something that the business understands in their own language or, or, you know, not just leaving it at a Kubernetes level, but tying that back to what work and effort is actually being funded and then what outcomes there are. This also ties into SLIs and SLOs and things like that. So kind of incubating some of these ideas and some others, it'll be in that doc if you're interested um, or know somebody who might be, uh, let them know. And, you know, we're just going to iterate and talk offline for a little bit, but I do see this as something that the tag could support either as sort of like a sandbox project so we could see what it's like to, to sandbox a project and go through that process, you know, as dog fooding and, and to make it more available. But I think there are interactions with both the GitOps working group around, and I've started those discussions and had more at KubeCon that I'll follow up on um, uh, in writing uh, around making a standard for reporting deployments, for example. So Flux and Argo and new tools that are coming out you know, how do we, in a structured way, in an, provide an API to at least say, this is the structure of that information so that an ecosystem of tools and vendors can make different approaches to using that data. But kind of like we have open metrics, you know, to, to, to codify some of that, I think we do need something there. So there's an interaction there. Uh, and some of the PRs uh, for that will go out today and tomorrow uh, to, to make interest, you know, formally. Um, at their guidance. And the other, which I haven't approached yet is SIG instrumentation, um, because some of, a lot of the source data comes from controller manager in many cases, or the API server itself, and some of the bowels of that, uh, which now has open telemetry instrumentation. So much of what we need may be there, uh, but we might wanna have additional hooks and or have a dialogue with them so that we can kind of iterate on future Kubernetes if there are missing ways to do you know, if there are interesting signals that we want to get um, out of the controller runtime, the controller manager, and all of its dozens of subcomponents, um, I think that would be the right interesting party. So, so that's my update on that. Um, as I said, uh, allocated some time in the, in the coming weeks uh, to, to have something maybe more to look at by next meeting with slides and a demo. Um, but yeah, if anyone's interested in collaborating that sees this later, reach out to me on CNCF Slack or uh, you can find me. <laughs> Thanks. We could probably call it early if there's nothing else. Um, again, super slow week across all of the places. So opportunity, yeah, and we're almost at time anyway. So is there anything else, uh, Richie, you want to cover? No. Um, oh, today's also Ignite. 
Microsoft's Ignite conference is like right now, keynotes are happening. Um, so okay. there's a lot of eyeballs there as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah, um, no, I, I don't have anything else. Okay, anything else before we go? We have an open floor, it's easy. Okay. All right, it was great to, great to meet you guys. Yeah, come next week. Uh, I think we'll have a bunch more people. We usually will make an agenda ahead of time. Sometimes we have guest speakers, as you were once. Yeah. In two, two, two weeks, right? Two weeks, yes. Uh, I got it. In, uh, in, yeah, in our next meeting. I figured. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm uh, excited to, to you know, come again and uh, participate. So, yeah, I'll definitely be there. All right. Tip. All right. Cool. Yeah. See you guys.